Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Tonight is episode 252. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. Hello to those of you who are watching on replay, and if you're new here, let us know. Let me say hi to a few of you. Hey, Wanda and Randy. Donna, Melissa, Kelly, Jeannie, welcome, welcome. Hi, Cindy, Barb, Charlotte, Melissa. Thank you for joining. We're going to be using the Santa Express. What did I call Yep. <laughs> yes, the Santa Express suite tonight. I wasn't quite ready to do Christmas, but um, I... It's just such an adorable suite of products. So we're gonna do that tonight. I am actually doing a remix of a project that I've shared in the past. I have changed the dimensions on this one. I'm gonna hold it up really quickly so you can see it. This is a no glue treat, no, a no glue gift box. It was a treat holder when I originally did the measurements for this one. Brian will pop the link in the comments. He may do it a couple of times because I have a feeling it'll come up during questions. But while he's doing that, why don't we do Brian's cameo? <laughs> Brian, my husband, is watching for your questions and comments tonight. If you do have a question, please put a Q colon in front of it. That will cue your question for our Q&A, which we'll save till the end of tonight's live stream so that I can focus on tonight's projects. I'm taking it easy tonight on projects because, I, well, one, I ran out of time, and I know this has happened to some of you. I ran out of mojo today. It just happens to the best of us, doesn't it? So, um, well, if you shop with me, you can earn Pixie perks on orders of $25 or more. If your order is under $150, I ask that you use my current host code. That means you'll earn Pixie perks. And the easiest way to do that is to use my shopping link, the paperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code. I just changed the host code yesterday for the last half of the month. Hard to believe we are in the middle of August already, August 17th, right? Yes, I think. Yes, August 17th. I forget I have the date right here to remind me. Um, if your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code because you'll earn stamp and rewards, but you will still earn Pixie Perks. And we are in the midst of celebration. We've only got less than two weeks left of celebration. That means you can earn free products with orders of $50 or $100 or any combination therein that Stampin' Up! did add 10 additional products on August 2nd, I believe was the date. So six uh, free with $50 purchase and four free with $100 purchase. Those are items from the either mini catalog or annual catalog, but pay close attention to the item numbers because there's a different item number to, to redeem those products for free. So stay tuned for that or pay attention to that. I do have show and tell tonight. It is not from the kids. It is actually from one of my customers. So Christine, if you are watching, I got the most incredible happy mail from her. Look at this gift box. I feel like I've taught her well. I'm a proud mama here, but this gift box is gorgeous. I know I have a feeling she may have gotten this from Mixed Up Craft. This looks like a Mixed Up Craft project, or she may have designed it herself. Christine, you gotta let me know if you're watching. But it's got a Velcro closure, and look at that awesome inset cardstock there. Just a fancy, fancy little gift box. And it was full of all kinds of treasure. So this is a sweet little treat pouch using that scallop tag tupper punch, which is my favorite punch ever. It has since retired, but she's given me one of those um, thread pullers. I don't know if that's the fancy name for it, but look how cute with the Splendid Stems dies. And that's the Splendid Thoughts bundle, I believe. And it's one of those... Um, thread pullers. <laughs> you guys, tell me what the actual name of that is. I don't know what it's called. But l here's another gift box, which I think is adorable. This is holding the Honest Company hand sanitizer spray. I love the size of this box. I don't think these are measurements from one of mine, but I love, love, love it. Grapefruit Grove, one of my favorite scents. So beautiful box. You may recognize this lily paper. This was a celebration paper from a couple of years ago. Seamer. Seam Ripper, thank you. Look at this adorable birth or unbirthday card, which I thought was so sweet. And I had to show she's fallen in love with wax sealing. And isn't that beautiful? I love that. It's almost like a rose gold with a dragonfly. 
What else did I get? I got some Hershey's Nuggets wrapped with some amazing paper. And then I love these little chap ice chapsticks. I did do a swap at a Stampin' Up! event where I'd put those in there. Cute little um, thing to put into a treat pouch. These fun little pens, which I guess I'll have to share with Lily. <laughs> and then this cute little vitamin pen. It reminds me of the mushroom pens. I think I actually have a bag of these vitamin pills I haven't done a treat box for. Cute little, just a sweet little care package and a nice little note. So Christine, thank you. I treasure this, such sweet, sweet handmade gifts. Thank you, thank you. All right, next, let's go ahead and jump into the project. Let me show you this again. Now it's funny, when you lose mojo, you are, well, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like this, but I'm falling in love with how simple it is. So let me show you where this is in the catalog. It's in the mini catalog on pages 16 and 17. Let me give you the full spread here. Such a fun suite of projects. I love that little gift bag there with the scallop on the little white scallop. Now this is a great suite of products. You get a stamp set and die bundle. There's also a pair of lan charming landscapes embossing folders. Those will also work in the mini machine. This beautiful iridescent trim, which I've used on here. Really, really pretty. And then adhesive backed stars, which I've pulled those out so you could see those as well. I'm gonna catch a bit of a glare there, but these are really pretty great for cards because they are super flat. So we'll go through the uh, postal machine really easily. And then you've got the memories and more card pack and the memories and more cards and envelopes and this awesome Santa Express designer series paper, which let me show you the swatch book here. Lots of fun. A lot of these images work with dies in the set. I love this ho 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 page. Yay, Stamping Elegance, welcome. Thanks for catching us live. All right, so that's the Santa Express suite. It's $107, which means you can either pick two free with $50 purchase celebration items with that, or one free with $100. You got lots of options. The new dies they add range in value from $32 to $38, so that is a great deal. I'm gonna hand that to you in case I need it again. All right, so we're gonna jump into making the, this actually holds a set of three by three cards. And I'm gonna show you a really cool page in the uh, Santa Express designer series paper. Is that what it's called? Santa, yes. <laughs> um, Santa is what I remembered Santa, but um, there's a really cool page in there that you can create three by three cards very, very easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and untie this just to show you how this no glue gift box goes together. The size I made previously measured two inches by two inches by three quarters of an inch. This one measures three and a quarter by three and a quarter by three quarters. It's a lot of quarters there. Um, but this is sized to fit a set of, now watch, it's gonna open like this. There's no glue. We just have to do a little bit of cutting. And like I said, I ran out of time today, but I've got eight mini cards. I designed one of them. But there's lots of fun designs you could do with this suite of products. And eight of our mini envelopes, and yes, we do sell these in the catalog. The mini envelopes are three and one eighth inch square. So the in interior dimensions of this, I mentioned three and a quarter by three and a quarter by three quarters, okay? And then it just kind of goes together like this. You do the side that doesn't have the flap. I do have a template to share with you. And then it's got little tabs at the top and then I just punch some holes and you can tie a ribbon there. If you've got a little binder clip, that could be cute as well. You could even staple it, all kinds of great stuff. So. Why don't we go ahead and jump into this? How are we doing? It appears it's not a seam ripper. It's not a seam ripper. All right. It's either a snag saver. Snag saver. Thread puller. I think it's a thread puller because she or said it could latchet. help me pull like twine through. What was the last one? Latchet. I think it's a maybe a thread puller, but I'm looking forward to using it. All right, so we're gonna start with the 12 by 12, but I'm gonna trim this down. I'm gonna give you a piece of advice here. With the way that this gift box goes together, you really want to do a pattern that is not directional. 
And let me see if I can demonstrate. So on the opposite side of this pattern, this is a little bit of a wider one. I just didn't like how wide it was. So this is one of my first samples that I played with. But I just wanna show you when this one closes, and let me get that closed so I can demonstrate that. You'll see that your patterns are going every which way. So right side up, upside down, and then sort of left to right. If that doesn't bother you, absolutely, absolutely use a directional pattern, but you're never gonna be able to get them all going the right direction, okay? So that's why I recommend using a non-directional pattern. And we're gonna trim our paper down. It's completely up to you how um, you wanna do the directional pattern on the inside. Let me show you something. So when this one opens, you'll see that the directional pattern is going uh, the wrong way. <laughs> Like, do you see what I mean? So we're gonna go ahead and cut this one a little bit differently. I just wanna pay attention to, okay. Hopefully I'm not throwing you off. Sometimes it matters what the inside of our boxes look like. So I'm a lazy cutter, right? I don't like to pull the arm out if I don't have to, but we're essentially going to make sure we have a piece that measures seven and a quarter inches, which means I'm gonna remove a four and three quarter inch piece. Um, from this side and what we're gonna end up with is make sure I'm doing the math right uh, four and three quarters I'm gonna remove that this big piece you can add back to your stash to use and then we're going to end up with seven and a quarter by 12 okay that's what we want to end up with and hopefully let me just double check myself because now I'm questioning yep seven and a quarter that's what we want All right, bringing in the Simply Scored. Let me grab my measurements here. Making a big old mess. All right, on the short sides, so the seven and a quarter inch side, we're gonna go ahead and score at three and a quarter inches from each side. So three and a quarter, go ahead and rotate 180 and do three and a quarter again. I always like to give you less measurements than more. Then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to the long side. And at this point, we're gonna be flipping our paper so many different ways. We're just gonna do all the score lines on the side or the pattern that we want to be on the outside. So my next score line is gonna be at one and one eighth, and then four and three eighths, okay? One and one eighth, four and three eighths. Go ahead and rotate 180 and repeat those again. One and one eighth, four and three eighths, okay? Then the next thing we're gonna do, let me show you on the template. I, I need to make some short score lines here. So I'm gonna make a score line at three quarters. So three quarters of an inch, but I'm gonna stop at that first horizontal score line. Then we're gonna rotate our paper 180 and do the same thing, three quarters, stop at that first horizontal score line. It's easier to show you here on the template because it's quite a busy pattern here. So again, I'm gonna go to three quarters and I'm gonna come down and sometimes I just feel with my finger and stop at that first horizontal score line, rotate it, and we're gonna go to three quarters. Again, stop at that first horizontal score line. And that's all the scoring we're gonna do on the Simply Scored. We're gonna do some diagonal folds, which will feel, feel familiar to you with some of the most recent projects I've been doing. We're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines, or all the score lines that go all the way across the paper. Don't worry about those short score lines yet. This is just gonna give us some really crisp edges here. And then we're gonna have fun putting this box together. I love a no glue gift box. They're just so fascinating to me. All right, so we've done all of the uh, burnishing on all the score lines that go all the way across. I'm gonna do a little bit of cutting at this point. So let me bring in the template here. I'm gonna turn it this way. Well, we'll kind of look at the bottom here. 
doesn't matter which side that you start with, but you'll notice we've got our short score line is here on this left section. Then we have a little three quarter inch section here and then we have a section that's not scored. I actually like to cut on the opposite side. Um, and my paper snips are hiding from me. So I'm gonna cut up each of these vertical score lines stopping at that first horizontal score line, okay? Do those two cuts first. And then essentially, remember I've got the score line here on this side, but it's easier for me to see where I'm cutting on the back side. I'm gonna remove this whole section here like in the template, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So then what you end up with is you've got this little tab and then you have our piece here that's got that score line. It's not in the middle of it, but it is in there, okay? This little guy is gonna end up being a tab. You can trim it shorter if you want to, but it's fine leaving it the way it is. I'm just gonna come in and miter cut. And I only come in about a 16th of an inch up to an eighth of an inch and then cut at an angle for that, just to give you that tab there, okay? And you can actually save this piece. This would work on a card project for sure. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Again, well, if I flip it, it's gonna look exactly the same, but we're gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines again, stopping at that first horizontal. Again, I'm kind of ignoring that short score line. Then we're gonna remove this section here. And then fold that bigger section out of the way and we'll come in and miter cut this tab. All right, so again, this is obviously not to scale, but it, it is, um, what do I want? Not to scale, but accurate. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. All right, so we're gonna do some corner rounding here and I'm just gonna grab the retired detail trio punch. But we're just gonna round the corners on these sections that have that score line. And you'll just kind of fold paper out of your way so you get a flat edge to do those rounded corners. I like the finish that the rounded edges give. Just use whatever corner rounder you have if you don't have the detailed trio punch. Now we're gonna add <laughs> now we're gonna add diagonal score lines, kind of going out this way, but I'm gonna show you you can either use a ruler and a stylus, but I actually like to just do this by hand. So let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna come with this in portrait and I'm gonna fold on that first score line from the right or on the right. And then we are going to, this is similar, this is similar to what we've done recently. I'm gonna take this score line and fold to meet up with this folded edge. Now I like to put my fingernail or the tip of my bone folder in there. I'm gonna go ahead and do that again and bring it up to the camera. But as I do that, I think you can see on the inside here, we're creating that diagonal score line here. So I'm gonna just press that in with my finger and then just come in with the bone folder. So essentially what we've done is this score line folding it on or folding it to meet up with that folded edge and that gives us that 45 degree angled diagonal score line there okay then <laughs> the dog is barking and then I'm going to repeat the same thing in the remaining three sections this time I'm folding on the score line on the left and then again lining up this score line with the folded edge and you just wanna take your time making sure that those are lined up properly. See how that edge is a perfect, perfectly lined up, that score line with the folded edge? That's gonna make sure that your diagonal score line is straight and going at the right angle. It's still quite forgiving though if you don't get it exactly right. I'm gonna rotate it 180 and repeat the same thing starting on the right side. Now we're focused on this score line which is closer to me. 
And again, use your fingertip or your bone folder. And if it's easier for you to actually draw those or score those diagonal score lines, by all means, look at the template for reference and then use a ruler and a stylus and score. Okay, so we've got all of those diagonals. Let me bring the template in one more time. So if we turn it this way, our score lines are sort of radiating out that way in these four outside three and a quarter inch sections, okay? Now the last thing we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna fold backwards on that last score line that we haven't burnished. Like so. Now we're gonna be popping some things out sort of in a different direction at this point. So we've got these diagonal score lines and these guys we actually wanna end up folding the opposite way, okay? So as I do that, I like to, you can usually get the paper to lay flush with your desktop and I'll just come in and burnish it the other direction. So we're just popping out that diagonal score line, basically folding it the opposite direction. And then the last one here. So instead of those diagonal score lines folding in, you don't want them to be, uh, you want them to be mountain folds and not valley folds, okay? So it's starting to come together here. Now I'm gonna lift this up and put it in landscape. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna to start to put this together. So this panel here is our front panel. I'm gonna bring this side over like so. And then you can kind of train your paper a little bit to get that to fold mostly flat. And then we're gonna bring in the left side the same way. Now this left side has the tab on it and that's the one that we wanna be on the outside. Okay, so let me show you that one more time and I'll repeat it on the back. This middle panel is our front. We'll bring the right side over and the left side over. And really the only difference between the project that I shared about two weeks ago, I think it was with the Splendid Day Suite, the foil paper, is that these actually folded inside the box, but I love the look of it on the outside. Okay, so that's the front. Then, I'm gonna turn around to this side. Again, here is the back panel, but we're gonna bring the right side over and then the left side. So it looks like this now. You're gonna find sort of the middle section in here and that is where we're gonna put our cards, okay? So I'm gonna to wait to do that. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish this one off. And I feel like I did it, oh, I actually did okay with the pattern. Maybe this should be the front because I did the pattern this way so that when the recipient opens it, it looks a little bit more normal that way. The nice thing about non-directional paper is you can pick whichever side you want for the front or the back. And those tabs just give you a nice finish on the edge here. I love having those tabs. Tabs are totally optional, but you'll find that when you tie your bow here, that's gonna stick up just a little bit and those tabs give that corner a really nice finish, okay? So next thing I'm gonna do is just grab an eighth of an inch hole punch. Well, we're, I'm kind of doing things a little bit out of order, but we'll get our holes punched now and that will sort of finish this except for embellishing it. And I like to come in from the side with this. This is again, just an eighth of an inch circle punch. I'm totally eyeballing this. But we'll punch two holes. Like so. And that will be ready for us to tie our bow through and close this together. So no glue, but we are gonna tie a bow. Okay, so let me show you on the front, we're gonna do a little bit of decorating with some cardstock. And this is actually really easy to do. So to create these triangles, actually, let me just go ahead and demonstrate it for you. All right, so I'm grabbing Poppy Parade and Basic White. So the front of this, hopefully this will be a quick tip for you if you're ever trying to figure out diagonals. This is three, quarter, three and one quarter inches square. So I'm gonna start with Poppy Parade. 
and I'm gonna make it a quarter of an inch smaller. So we're gonna cut this to three by three. And then we want our basic white to be a quarter of an inch smaller as well. So we're gonna do this one to two and three quarters by two and three quarters. All right, so we've got our three by three and our two and three quarters by two and three quarters. I'm just gonna line that up on the cutting groove diagonally corner to corner. And so then we're gonna cut this. Let me make sure it stays put. We're gonna just cut this on the diagonal. And then we're gonna have two triangle pieces for two of these no glue gift boxes. And then the same thing with the two and three quarter inch square basic white. Again, use that cutting groove to your advantage. You're lining up the diagonal points. And then we'll go ahead and cut. If for some reason your paper trimmer is giving you a hard time cutting at that corner, just start your trimmer your trimmer blade in the center and go up and then come back down and that should give you a better cut, okay? So then we've got two of these and then these are just gonna layer really nicely like so and then they will mat really nicely on the front of that, okay? And you can obviously change the dimensions, just do square pieces and cut them on the diagonal if you wanna have a thicker border of the Poppy Parade or um, however you wanna mix that up. But that's a quick and easy way. You wanna come in smaller than the size of the box and then square piece cut on the diagonal, okay? Now I set up uh, my Stamparatus because my photopolymer was giving me a little bit of trouble with the ink pooling. And then it's a brand new stamp set, so I know that that happens. So I just set up the stamp right here on my Stamparatus. I'm gonna go ahead and put my corner piece here and make sure I've got the right stamp. Probably, probably should show you this bundle up close the Santa's Delivery Bundle, and it's got such fantastic sentiments. I love this, Elf Approved and Sleigh Delivered. So I'm gonna stamp that on our little diagonal piece here. Here's the set of dies. I've got the little bow out because I was playing around with that with the mini cards. But these dies, a lot of these will cut out patterns in the designer series paper. And I'll probably show you the little choo-choo train when we make one of the um, mini cards tonight, okay? I do like to keep the stamp set and stick that underneath my Stamparatus mat. Now I've got another stamp that's down here, so I'm making sure that my stamp is not in the way there. And we're gonna do the beautiful Shaded Spruce, which is one of the colors in this suite. Making sure that that corner piece is up in the corner. And we'll see how this ink behaves. I'm gonna kind of show you what's happening here little bit of, well, it's not too bad. Just a little bit of ink pooling, and I would love the Stamparatus for this, because I'll just stamp again, and then you'll never know that the ink pooled. Making sure that's in the corner, and stamp one more time, and we'll get a really rich stamp out of this one. There we go. Love that. So plain and simple, which is one of my favorite ways to go with paper crafting. We'll bring the Stamparatus back in a minute. And then I'm just gonna take liquid glue and glue our little triangles together. I love how bright this Poppy Parade is showing up on camera. I love seeing my pixies saying hi to each other in the chat. Thanks for joining, Pam and Kathy. All right. And if you're new here, you're probably seeing a lot of folks putting a Q in front of their question. That is a great way to get your question answered during our Q&A at the end of the live stream. So I will be answering questions. So there is that. And then we are going to glue that onto the front. We just gotta figure out which one's the front. This one, because I want my pattern on the inside to go the right way. 
So we're gonna glue this right here to this panel. So I'm actually going to get this flat. Liquid glue. I know that this looks like it's going in the wrong direction, but once folded, this will be the front. Super, super fun. All right, so let me show you that one more time. Folding in the front, and then in the back. Isn't that cute? This is a really cute way to give a set of mini three by three cards, which are great for gift enclosures during the holidays. But obviously switch this up for so many different occasions, even um, an autumn themed project or birthday, you name it. Everybody needs little mini cards. So let me show you. We're gonna come back to this. I'm gonna make, um, I'm gonna design a couple more of these cards, I think, and then we'll put them in the box and I'll show you how we're gonna tie that closed, okay? But I wanna do the cards first before we close this guy off, so stay tuned. All right. This pattern in the Santa Express Designer Series paper is perfect for three by three cards. And I've shown this before, but I have fallen in love with three by three cards using designer series paper as the card base. So this is per almost perfect. Let me caveat that. But these are three inch strips of similar patterns. So I'm going to bring in the paper trimmer. One of the things I love about Stampin' Up's paper trimmer is that there is an edge here that is exactly six inches. So I'm gonna come here with my pattern going top to bottom or running vertically. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this into two pieces that are six by six, okay? Next, I'm gonna bring back one of these, now is six by 12, and we're gonna score that right down the middle at three inches. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to the other piece, score right down the middle at three inches. And then I'm gonna turn this long ways and we're gonna cut at three inch marks. Now this pattern is just slightly off. You'll notice as I cut this, um, they're not exactly three inches, but we do wanna cut our cards to three inches. So don't pay attention so much to the lines on the designer series paper, but you'll notice, so this one's, this one's perfect, right? Then we're gonna come in and do three inches again. You'll see there's a little bit of white space. And if that bothers you, you could feel free to trim it off. Okay, and then three inches again. Now that one will have a little bit of green at the bottom, but I think that actually looks really cute. So we're gonna repeat that. Let's see. And then we'll instantly have eight three by three cards, which I love that. All right. Then I'm just gonna come in and fold and burnish. And what I love about these is that pop of Poppy Parade on the inside just gives it such a really beautiful inside. One of the great best things about our double-sided designer series papers and using them as three by three, you get to see both sides. I love projects that show both sides because then you don't feel so bad covering one of them up, right? We're not gonna create all of these, but I just wanna show you kind of how quick it is to cut and prep eight card bases using one sheet of 12 by 12. So we've got our eight card bases. Then what I love to do, especially when it's a brighter pattern like this, is just grab a two and three quarter inch square piece of basic white, and we're gonna add that to the inside. Did you grab Nalita's question? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nalita, Brian grabbed your question for you. Um, all right. So that's what I would put on the inside of each of these. Two and three quarter inch square piece of basic white. And then, let's see. 
I'm gonna cut a couple of strips. We'll design a card similar to the one I did before, and then I wanna show you one other version. I have got a piece of basic white. This is three inches, and I'm just gonna cut that to three quarters of an inch. So three by three quarters. And you could cut basically a three inch strip and then just cut, 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 cut all the three quarter inch strips that you need. And then Poppy Parade, I'm going to cut this to one inch. This is one inch by three inches. So that those will layer. Now that doesn't look right. I think I grabbed my two and three quarter inch piece. All right, let's cut this to three inches again, or a strip to three inches. That's what happens when you're working from scraps. I just grab whatever. All right. So now that should be three by one and three by three quarters. I'm gonna bring in the Stamparatus again. Now this time I set it up on the opposite side of the plate and then I am just going to take this strip putting my stamp set under there And same thing, I like using the Stamparatus for this to give me a really sharp stamp. Sometimes the ink pools on photopolymer, especially if they're brand new. You'll see that on this one. I know it's upside down, but yeah, ink's pooling just a little bit. So we just need a second stamp and that'll be good. Go ahead and put that back. Close my ink before I get all inky. All right, so these two pieces I'm just gonna layer over each other with my glue bottle, which is right under my nose. You have about an eighth of an inch of the Poppy Parade peeking out from behind. And then I'm just gonna pop that up, clean and simple, sort of letting the designer series paper do all the talking here. Pop that up on the front. And then I wanna die cut one of those bows and show you what that cute bow looks like. Put that off to the side. Bring in stamp a cut and emboss machine. Got a scrap of Poppy Parade and we've got this cute little bow which got has a little bit of detail on it. Oops, stuck on there. Just pop out those little inside pieces. Put that in my metal bowl so I don't forget. And then look how cute, there's that little circle on the inside, a little bit of detail there. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and glue this on the front. You could do a different color. Um, something pink <laughs> It's in the, uh, petal pink is in there. So a petal pink bow would be really cute here as well. But I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the back of that, you could use a glue dot as well. Just a cute little bow there to add a little bit of interest. Again, keeping these sort of clean and simple. I don't want a lot of bulk so that they'll be, these will fit in there nicely. And then I'm just gonna grab, I just got a new pack of rhinestones. Use the putty end here and pop that right in the center. I like using the smaller rhinestones for this because they won't thicken this too much. So there is a really simple gift card. And again, you can pair that with the envelope, right? And you can certainly stamp on the envelopes for some additional interest. And I just saw that comment. These would make fantastic gift tags as well. But I wanted to also show 
I think these would look really cute die cutting one of these Santas, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let's grab this guy and I'm just gonna come in and sort of strategically perform some paper surgery here so we can maximize all of our Santas and their trains. We'll just go this way. I don't think I'm actually gonna use that tree there, but maybe. Just think he would be really cute on the front of one of these mini cards. So I'm gonna grab my, uh, let's see, it's hiding under here. My post-it tape. And if you're looking for the post-it tape I use, I do have that linked on my favorites page. That is here, the paperpixie.com slash favorites. And I'm just lining up edges here. I like to do two pieces of post-it tape that kind of anchors it in place. Now I think you can cut these out with the scan and cut. You may have some trouble with the wheels. Um, because they're white. Sometimes the scan and cut has a hard time scanning that. I'm anticipating your questions because I know how many of you think. This will not fit a gift card. Wait, that's not true. It will not fit a gift card. That is true. Because gift cards need three and three eighths and this is three and a quarter. Is that one of the questions already? No. <laughs> Look how cute. Santa and again the designer series paper is doing all the work and I just think this will be really cute popped up on one of these and you could certainly add a sentiment as well but let's just go ahead for fun let's put some dimensionals behind him Yeah, it's raining here. Ah, oh, just really cute. Isn't that sweet? I would pop up maybe a little tiny circular sentiment. Like that ho 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 would be really, really cute with a small circle die. That would be adorable. So you may see that on my future blog posts for this project. Stay tuned. But let's go ahead and let's finish off the box and then we'll jump into your questions tonight. So we're just gonna pretend we've got our eight cards. Two, four, six, eight, that's nine. <laughs> eight cards, eight envelopes. Obviously we'll have a few more layers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you. So these will be a little bit thicker than they are now. But again, we've got seven eighths of in width here. So I'm gonna pop those in the center like so. And then kind of pinching it like so, we're gonna do that to the front and this to the front. If you wanna flip it over, again, we do right, left. We got the tabs and then we've got these two tabs with our hole punch. That's bothering me. Like so. So let's bring in the iridescent trim, which is gorgeous. Brian had the pleasure of cutting this for our product shares and we had iridescent trim all over the house, didn't we? But it sure is pretty. All right, so I'm gonna pull that through the right side, back through the left. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tie a bow here. You could also add a cute little tag as well to hang from the trim. This is a fun box to play around with. Can't wait to see what you guys make with it. All right, go ahead and cut, cut. And there is our no glue gift box holding a set of eight three by three cards and eight envelopes. Super cute. Now you'll see I've got a little bit of space. See how that's kind of got a little bit of a gap there. Once you add some additional layers to those cards, they'll fill up that space really nicely. So there we go. See, we've got some iridescent trim on the desktop. And if that bothers you, here's a tip. 
Grab a lint roller, pick those babies up. Even tiny paper pieces as well. The iridescent trim is a close second to glitter, which is not allowed in my house. <laughs> there we go. So there is our treat holder. And here's a sample of one of the cards that's in there using the designer series paper in the Santa Express suite, right? Santa Express. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead. Let me tee up your questions. If you got some tips or tricks tonight, be sure to like, follow, or subscribe. And if you may have noticed last week, Brian and I are working on creating project sheets for all of my projects, or I should say not all of them, but we're going back quite a ways. So I do plan to update, update the description of this video with a project sheet. The project sheets are one page intended to be just for reference. So the template will not be full scale, but it will be perfect for reference. There'll be a picture of the project, the measurements, and then some featured supplies that I used. So if you wanna check last week's live stream and look in the description, you will see a couple of project sheets, one for the card because it had, because it had a great layout and one for the treat holder, which was the self-closing treat holder, I think was what it was called, but I do have project sheets. You can check those out. Would love your feedback. And um, we will plan to update that hopefully in the next day or two on this, just to sort of tide you over until I can get the blog post posted. I'm still playing catch up on projects, all right? So let me get your questions queued up. All right, let's go to the next scene here. Hello, Bobby, I always love saying hi to you because you have a cue in your question. You are trap. oh, Cindy, I heard you might be jealous. Uh, she said, you're traveling with one of my best friends from airport at Backstage. I'm super excited to travel with Jenny, it's awesome. Um, I'm so jealous, she's wonderful, you will love her. I'm excited to have a buddy. I was telling my husband that um, next week, there's a leadership event for Stampin' Up! in New Orleans, and I was telling him that my introverted self, I'm of my ambivertness, because I'm an introverted extrovert or extroverted introvert, sometimes I don't love finding where to, how to get to where I'm going when I get to the airport. <laughs> so anyways, so I found a buddy with Jenny, so hello, a Lady Antique, thanks for joining us. It's a seam ripper, all right. Let's see, I think we're, we're gonna debate that, but I bet Christine might be on. <laughs> Which brother scan and cut do you have and recommend? And who do you suggest we watch on YouTube for the best tutorials for the scan and cut? Susie, great question. I currently have the scan and cut SDX 125E. You can find the one that I have on my favorites page. For a comprehensive bunch of tutorials, I recommend going to the papered, P-A-P-E-R-E-D, so papered chef. She, Kim has lots of great tutorials for the scan and cut. I did a quick and dirty, short and sweet scan and cut tutorial a couple weeks ago with the Wonderful World Bundle, just to show you how I use it to cut out designer series paper and stamped images, but papered chef has tons of tutorials, so definitely check out her channel. You did not miss the live. Welcome, Joanne. Any ideas for a treat holder for the chap ice? You know what, Cindy? I have to remember what, I know that I did the chap ice. I used to always take like 200 swaps to Stampin' Up! events. I don't have the time to do that now, but one of them was the chap ice, and I'm gonna have to think through how I created a treat holder for that, but I'm definitely adding that to my list of possible future tutorials because they are really sweet and it's such a cute little pick-me-up to give to somebody. So um, I don't think I posted that project to my blog, um, but I'll have to see if I can remember <laughs> what I did. It's so funny, that was pre-pandemic, so probably three or four years ago that I did that, but I will definitely come up with something for that. Thank you. I know it's a very different gift box, but super fun to put together. Celebration ends on August 31st, so here in less than two weeks. Oh, thank you, Mary, for the help with telling people to add Q. Awesome, awesome. I looked it up on Amazon as a thread puller. It's to pull or cut the thread from fabric. Very cool. Did I do a mini ice chat box before? Um, I, I answered that, right? I, haven't, I have done one before, but it's not on the blog, and I'm not sure <laughs> what I did for that. It might have been like a mini milk carton, but anyways, I'll see if I've got any photos in my 
photo library. What would I do without the photos I have on my phone? Could you make a, milli, a mini belly band to use on the top? You absolutely could. Um, to hold to hold it together, absolutely. Kona is doing so much better, Fiona. She's got a clean bill of health. She's back to normal. Um, we, she was on antibiotics for what, like 12 weeks? But yeah, she's doing awesome now. She's back to her old self. So thank you for asking. I thought I remembered you mentioning that if we wanted instructions of the projects in the catalog. Oh yes, Yvette. So um, if since you're a demonstrator on my team, Stampin' Up! does publish the uh, supplies list under the print lab on the demonstrator website. So feel free to reach out to me. I can send you a direct link to that. But yeah, they're very long. Like they take a while to open because it's basically all the supplies used for all the samples in both the mini catalog and the annual catalog, but it is under the print lab for demonstrators. You absolutely can have the folds on the inside, Tina. Let me show you that really quickly. Oops, wrong one, this one. See my keyboard here. So Tina, you could absolutely fold those on the inside. You're gonna have a little bit of a different look for sure. The only problem is with the way that the tabs here are, they're designed to, um, for it to be folded on the outside. So let me just show you and see if I can explain what you would need to do. You would actually need to have your tabs in those middle sections because right now with those tabs here, you're gonna have kind of that, see how it's popping out? So the middle panel is the one that you need to have the um, tabs on and that would actually be in this direction, okay? So you would actually not have the tabs here on the right and the left you would need it to be on the, the tabs on the top and the bottom if you wanted to fold this, fold the diagonals inside, okay? Got lots of treat holders where those tabs are folded on the inside, okay? All right, great question. Would it work? It would work if you glued it, Linda, absolutely. Um, if you glued the box, let's come back to this. I'm glad I have an extra one here. You can absolutely glue it, and essentially what would happen is, oops, these are all popped out. Let's go this way. What's going on here? There we go, there we go. So if you glue the diagonal tabs down, that would be totally fine, because it would then just have, that would be open then on the inside. So um, it wouldn't open all the way if it's glued, but that's completely fine. So totally user preference there. I hope that answers your question. So those would be open on the inside as a gift box. Now, um, obviously it looks really cool with the diagonal, but you'll just see that's a lot of paper then to glue to the inside. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, user preference for sure. All right. That is the stamp and storage magnet mat in the Stamparatus. Yes, I love it, Mary. Um, it, it gives just a little extra, um, almost like a shim, to get a much better stamped image each time. I love that. So um, that is the magnet card from Stampin' Storage, and it's sized to fit the Stamparatus. Highly recommend it. I don't use my Stamparatus without it. Even, well, now that we're talking about it, I even leave it in when I pull the foam mat out, which is what you pull out when you use our red rubber. So I leave the magnetic mat in all the time, and then I just pop the foam mat under. That's the one that comes with it from, Stamp from Stampin' Up! to use photopolymer. I take the foam mat out to use red rubber, okay? Let's see. Um, what I mean by ink pooling, so Cheryl, what happens is almost like um, it doesn't bubble up, but the ink, I'm trying to think how to describe it. It's almost like dew. Does that make sense? Like when you ink it up, the ink just kind of pools into little pools and doesn't give a smooth um, stamped image. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on here. Do you see how it's kind of splotchy? That was one stamp, and you can see the splotchiness is kind of where the ink, because it's photopolymer and because it's new, right? Um, sometimes you have to condition your photopolymer stamps in order to get that to stamp right. But that's what I kind of mean by pooling. Kind of hard to describe, but it creates little mini pools of ink and then doesn't stamp evenly. 
Do I know what else might fit in this? Treats. Um, Stephanie, I'm trying to think. So it's three and a quarter by three and a quarter by three quarters. So many three quarters. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I did size it specifically to fit three by three cards and envelopes. Um, Brian did share a link in the chat to my two by two by three quarter, same, basically exact same style, just two by two by three quarters that fits either two or three, depending on whether you have filling or not in the Ghirardelli of Ghirardelli squares. So if you're looking for a treat holder, that one is great for, um, Ghirardelli squares, uh, York peppermint patties, um, this one is quite large. Now, what might actually fit in here? He just popped the link in the chat again. Do you, I don't remember what they're called. Some of you may have to help me out here, but those wafers that have the caramel on the middle that you set on top of you, either your hot tea or your hot coffee or your hot chocolate and the caramel starts to melt. It's a, I want to say it's a Belgian treat. Those actually might be a good fit if you can find them individually wrapped to fit in this. I'm trying to think of things that are a little bit bigger. Um, a Stroop waffle, yes. Did you come up with that or did the audience? No. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna be like, Brian, good job. He doesn't even know what a Stroop waffle is. Um, so, yeah, so that's one idea. And if you hear background noise, it's pouring here in Atlanta. Um, I have to think about that though. So three and a quarter by three and a quarter by three quarters of an inch, but maybe it's true waffles. Reese's. Reese's peanut, peanut butter cups for sure. They're gonna swim around a little bit because those are closer to like a little over two by two. They're more like two and a quarter, I think. Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs would fit. Those would also be kind of disproportionate. I said, well, Ghirardelli, this one's a little big for Ghirardelli squares. The link that Brian put in the chat, that's one that I did back in 2019. That's a two by two. Those will fit Ghirardelli squares. I sized that one specifically for the Ghirardelli squares. I said earrings. Earrings. Yeah. Um, you could do some cute stuff for sure. Um, when using your trimmer, is it better to always go in the same direction? or both directions to save your blade and not have to change as often? Great question, Denise. I typically always cut in whichever direction I've left the blade in last. So I, it, so I basically alternate for each cut for the most part. It's funny, um, subconsciously I might move it back to the top position, but I typically try to cut down and then cut up and then cut down because you want to basically um, equally use both sides of that trimmer blade and yes that will make your blade last longer for sure great question have ever given a tutorial on how to use the brother printer Ooh, nalita you might need to um oh see she got cued because she has a q in her name hers popped up in the queue yeah. um i you clarify this your question for me Nalita if you don't mind put a cue in front of your clarification are you talking about the brother label printer or the brother scan and cut because sometimes people call that a printer so let me know um I have not given a full-on tutorial I'm going to answer it actually I'll just answer it both ways because <laughs> some of you may have the same question I've done a very brief tutorial on the brother label maker um, when I did my top 10 organizational ideas uh, when did we do that last fall ish I don't know days are running together um, but we did I did a top 10 and I talked about how I used the brother label printer to label my dies and my punches and all that good stuff I did a brief showcase I think of the program itself but I haven't done a full um, tutorial of that um, but I use the Brother P-Touch Editor, which is available for both PC and Mac, and it just gives me more design options. Um, but I do have my Brother Label Maker that I use on, listed on my favorites page. It's the Cube Plus, I believe it's called. It's the cutest little black box um, that is Bluetooth, and I love that thing. I have not, the only tutorial I've done of the Scan and Cut is just briefly, I did a couple weeks ago, showed how I die, or how I Scan and Cut designer series paper and stamped images but papered chef has great tutorials for that 
What is the texture of the trim? Soft and fuzzy or thick and rough? Ooh, Linda, good question. It is, it's not soft, but it's not super rough. It's honestly like right in between. I'm playing with it as I'm t describing it for you. Um, this is gonna sound really weird and crazy, but I don't know how else to explain it. Like when you haven't shaved your legs for a while. <laughs> is that weird? <laughs> We're all friends here, but that's what it feels like. It feels like stubble kind of. Um, but it is sort of a woven yarn. I don't know if how close I can get, but see how it's woven? Yeah, it just feels like stubble, to be honest. That's such a weird way to describe a craft supply, but <laughs> it's the best way my brain can explain it. But yeah, I wouldn't say that it's super soft. But it's not like, it's not poking me as far as being like um, cactus or anything like that. Maybe Brian, Brian's feeling it now. Um, not soft, it's right? It's kind of like pipe cleaner. A little bit like pipe cleaner? But like with sticker. Yeah, like flexible pipe cleaner kind of. Yeah. I think pipe cleaner is softer, if I'm being honest. Except for the yeah, wire yeah, in the middle. It is yeah. Soft, right? <laughs> As we di debate the iridescent trim and what it feels like. So Sandra's saying she's going to send us $100 bills. For the yeah. treat. She's going to use it to send us. I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, you are about to make the flowering cactus box, but now you can't find your DSP paper. I've been trying to find some. Um, shoot me an email and I will see if I can find some for you. I don't have any, um, but I have some resources that might be able to find an, uh, a pack for you. So shoot me an email, julie at thepaperpixie.com, supersanders58, and I'll see what I can find for you. But you got to email me or I'll forget. Ghirardelli squares. Oh yeah, I saw that, Pam. So yeah, that would I would recommend the the older version of this for Ghirardelli squares. How on earth did Brian find the older posts from three years ago? He had some help. <laughs> right before we went live, I was like, search on my website, no glue, and he's like, this one. I'm like, that one. So I was anticipating that you all were gonna ask for that. So I helped him out. Yes, the label printer. So Nalita, if you look for my um, top 10 organizational ideas video. I want to say that was back in November of 2021. Shoot me an email, Nalita, and I'll, or it, you can text me too. Um, and I'll see if I can find that for you. It's just a good starting point, but I don't have a full on tutorial of how to use um, the printer itself. It's fairly self-explanatory, but I'll keep that in mind for sure. All right. I think we are at the end of the questions. Julie at thepaperpixie.com. That's my email. Or you can always go to thepaperpixie.com and I've got a contact form as well. So, all right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thanks to those of you that have watched on the replay. If you got a tip, trick, or learned something new tonight, I'd love if you'd like, follow, and subscribe, depending on where you're watching us from, whether Facebook or YouTube. Oh, I got one more question come in. Let me grab that really quickly. How do you condition photopolymer stamps so they don't pool? There's a couple of different things you can do here. There are folks that will add, um, you can stamp it with Versamark. You do wanna make sure that you clean it off because sometimes there's a little bit of the um, production residue, not production residue, but residue from um, the creation process. You can wipe it on a pair of jeans to kind of roughen up the edge a little bit. That'll get maybe a little bit of lint on your stamp set, but that's one thing that you can try. Some folks have tried using the ink eraser, the Tombow ink eraser. I would do that very, very gently if you're still having, that's sort of like a last, last resort because I wouldn't want you to damage your stamp. Um, but usually you want to make sure that it's good and clean. You can condition it with Versamark. Um, that type of thing. Try a couple of different things. It doesn't happen all the time for me, um, usually with new with new stamps as well, but the audience may have some great tips or, tri or tricks too. The current quarter ends September 30th, Cindy. So you're asking from a demonstrator perspective, September 30th is the end of the current quarter and also the end of the Stampin' Up year, okay? Aw, thank you, Bobby. Thank you, thank you. All right, you guys, 
I'm going to wrap this show up. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like, follow, or subscribe. I will update the description of this video, both on Facebook and YouTube, with a link to the project sheet probably in the next day or two. Stay tuned for that. This post, th these projects will likely make it to the blog, if not next week, the week after. We've got quite a backlog of products, projects that I am getting through onto the blog post, playing catch up from the month of July. So stay tuned for that, but I'll try to get that project sheet up there in the next day or two to tide you over until then, so that you've got the measurements and a template for reference, so you can rec recreate this project yourself. And if you do, I'd love for you to share it on social media with the hashtag PaperPixie. I check those out. I love seeing the work that you create. It really makes my day. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful and blessed week. And I will see you next Wednesday for episode 253 of Live with the Paper Pixie. Take good care. Talk soon. Bye.